All right, uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, we're going to do radiation patterns, effective radiated power, effective isotropic radio power. So if you're interested in things like that, where your RF goes from your ham radio gear to the other side of the planet, then uh, hook along. I'm also aiming this at people studying for the foundation exam in the UK. But it's all basic, good, solid stuff. So if we've got a couple of trees here and a dipole strung up between the two and we've done that before in the last i was about to say lesson then oh, i'm a teacher and i don't know it in the last episode and our coax comes down to our little radio at the bottom then where does our energy go now so that you can see this energy better we can we can emulate it with a piece of software and the software i use is called mmana not the most advanced in fact it's very easy to use and we can work out where our energy goes so on my screen here i've got this very thing look uh, the red dot in the middle is i've just applied it <laughs> the red dot there and where does the energy go all right so now if the book tells us that the energy goes if it's if it's here the energy goes that way and that way and it kind of does but i'm going to give you some bonus material as well today because we can go to the far field plot here and look at this in 3d so there's our dipole running through the middle of this thing all right and the energy you can see where the energy is going however that's in free space so as far as the exam's concerned all right you now know what it looks like However, bonus material, what actually happens when you have it near the ground? So I'm going to put this at one wavelength above the ground. So it doesn't matter if you're considering the CB band, which is 11 meters, or the 10 meter band, about 28 something megahertz, which is the 10 meter band ham radio band. So this is, it just so happens it's for the 20 meter band. And I'm going to put it a wavelength above the ground. So this will be 20 meters about 21 actually is a wavelength above the ground all right so that'll do ignoring all numbers doesn't matter because always we're looking at is the far field um plot and it looks like this and we can zoom this in a bit and move it around to let you see and i'll just spin this around it's a funny shape i was about to say because we're near the ground and the ground supplies us with reflections and you can see we've got these lobes some people call them fingers all right so this bit that you can see on the outside here is this down from the top okay so the left hand side is if you're flying over it as a bumblebee and on the right hand side you're on the pavement or the sidewalk looking at the the pattern if you could see it which we haven't got we did have some special RF glasses, but they're at the factory. Very expensive, where you can see the RF. You can't actually see it. It's a completely different wavelength to our eyes. So far, that's where the energy goes. Okay, so all you need to know for the exam is that the energy comes off the edges perpendicular to the dipole. But I'm going to do a couple of other things as well. I'd like to show you, well, minimise this. Let's bring it up now. I think I've got something called a Yagi here. Do you remember the TV aerial? We spoke about we spoke about a TV aerial not so long ago and how the most of the energy went in that direction. Well, I've got one here as well. So we can have a look at the far field plot here and we can see, well, hey, so this is at chimney height, which is roughly the height um, of a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see that there's more energy in one direction and that is called a Yagi now then one more piece of data before we head off into um, effective radiated power I've got a vertical for you as well this is a vertical on the ground as it so happens just to show you what happens for a vertical it looks similar to a dipole doesn't it I'm just to zoom this in a bit for us similar to but it's sitting on the ground and if you remember a couple of lessons ago, we said that the energy went perpendicular to the, the vertical. And there we are, there's a kind of proof of the pudding. Now, 
we can we can look at things like takeoff angles and all sorts of advanced stuff which we're not interested today i just want to show you that bit of a bonus material modeling software is really cool because you can draw some really weird shapes just to see where your rf is going to go but anyway that's that's it there so that is a dipole and this is a yagi now this talks about effective radiated power now if you remember on this video um we did we talked about dbs okay and how if you've got something an amplifier giving you 3 db amplification you would have uh, and it's say you have a 25 watt transceiver and you applied a 3 db amplifier to it then we double it it becomes 50 watts output okay so because we've got an amplifier of 3 db because every time we do 3 db we double it so and it's very easy in the exam you'll get asked a question and you'll go hang on callum said 3 db is double so if it's 6 db or 9 db that's really easy isn't it because <laughs> let's let's do 9 db start off with 25 watts 3 db gives us 50 watts 3 db again equals 100 watts and 3 db again would give us 200 watts that would be 9 db so if you have 25 watts with a 9 db amplifier we'd end up with 200 watts going up the pipe right so far so good now what happens is very when we buy an antenna or make an antenna or use modeling software whatever else it will have a gain and the gain will be in dbs now it it reminds us in the book actually that manufacturers very often talk about unfortunately most manufacturers quote gain in in a scientific way called decibels and this can be converted to actual gain using table 6.1 blah 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 blah, blah. All you need to know in the exam, they're going to give you a really simple question. It'll be you've got 25 watts going up the pipe and you have a gain on your antenna of six decibels. What is the effective radiated power ERP relative to a dipole now? We'll come back to that. I just want to remind us, in case you shooting ahead here, we did the difference between dBi and dBd. This difference here a few weeks ago now. The effective radiated power is relative to a dipole. So if we've got 25 watts with a 6 dB gain antenna then just as we did here a moment ago 6 db is going to be 100 watts so the effective radiated power of a 25 watt transceiver with a 6 db gain the effective radiated power is going to be 100 watts you got that hopefully if it's effect if it's eirp effective isotropic radiated power and it says it in the book here it's sufficient to remember that 10 watts isotropic radiated power is the same as 6.1 erp sometimes i just can't get my blooming words out okay erp is relative to a dipole and eirp is relative to an isotropic antenna now we did isotropic antennas on this video go and have a look and i'll put a link in the description okay so we got gain and we're using that db again all right now if you're in doubt there's a little chart here and it says look 3 db is two times the power 6 db is two times again that'd be four right 9 db is eight times the power it just so happens that 10 db is 10 times the power okay it's confusing if you like going 16 times the power but if you take 9 db and add 3 db to it you go from 9 to 12 when well, sure enough 3 db is double so it goes from 8 to 16 
So I did before, if you remember, if something is at 20 dB and we increase it to 23 dB, no matter what it is, right, we've doubled the power. Okay, just remember that. 3 dB is double. That's all you need to know. All right, so nice and short one. Let's keep it simple. Effective radiated power, effective isotropic radiated power is all to do with gain. All right, and there'll be one question on it when it comes to when it comes to the exam. Now we will be doing a couple of mock exams live. Well, I don't think we're live actually, but we'll, we'll do a couple of mock exams and I'll show you the sort of questions. Very, very simple. And if you follow this series along, you'll just pass. Okay, there we are. So I'll see you next time. What are we doing next time? Whoa, ho, ho. stand by, stand by. I think there's some good stuff actually. Polarization, that's easy, all right? Matching antennas and SWR. Sounds complicated, very simple. All right, I'll see you next time. Have a great day, guys and girls. All right, bye for now.